Hi guys, it's Kobe here and in today's video we are going to do this, a rolling cube with no keyframe. So let's get into Cinema 4D and quickly see how this is done. And also, after this video, my next video is going to be how you do the same technique in After Effects, um, a rolling box with um, no keyframe. So if you want to see that, I suggest this is the time to subscribe and also turn on the notification icon so that like if I drop anything you get notified and can watch it when it drops and it also helps me and supports me to continue to do more so now I have Cinema 4D open this is Cinema 4D R20 but this technique will work in later version or previous versions of Cinema 4D so I'll go ahead and create a cube so I'll come to the object menu here and create a cube right and cube unlike sphere or circle it's um, pivot is not in the middle depending on how, where you want to roll it it might be down here in this corner or down here at the left corner so depending on where the cube is rolling to that's where the pivot will be so if you want to roll it to go to the right side then the pivot will be down corner here right but for now now when we rotate it you can see it's in the middle so this being a parametric cube we to make to make our pivot move down here it means you have to make it editable or we have to create our own um, pivot so we will use the null object i'll come here create a null object right and i'll move it so actually change the views i'll come to the front view and because the cube we know the size of the cube the cube is 200 centimeters all sizes so if you want to move the null to the uh, right down corner here that means you have to move it 100 centimeters on x right because that's half of the cube and down 100 centimeters uh, 100, minus 100 centimeters on the down so now we have the pivot down here so we can now make the cube a child of the null object right and now if you rotate you can see we have our pivot there so ideally if you want to animate it with keyframe this is how we are going to do it so if you want to roll it several times it means anytime you animate it and the null comes here right now the pivot is here and now if you want to roll it make it move forward again it means you have to move our pivot here right and now make the cube go back so we've been animating the cube and the pivot back and forth like that or there's other way around that i can go ahead and create another pivot so i'll create another no i want it to because when we roll it the pivot will come and be on this corner the top corner so i want i'll create another pivot and make it um put it at this corner so that when we roll it will get to this one then now i'll animate that one as well i mean in later when i'm done teaching the technique with the um without the keyframes i'll actually show how i'll actually do it if i'm doing this with a uh, normal animations and i also show you how i can actually anim you animate it without um, um all this no but still go ahead and animate it so let's go ahead and start um doing the technique so i'll go ahead and take out the cube and delete this nodes right so we are going to use dynamics you know 4d dynamics so i'll create a floor so i'll come into the object menu again actually i'll come to here in the environment this menu and i'll choose um, floor right now I'll move the cube up 100 centimeters so that like the base of the cube will be on the floor or that way I could move the the floor down 100 minus 100 centimeters but I'll move the cube rather so now we have the cube and then the floor and it's my for this floor like even though we see this every part the whole floor is covered so now what we have to do is add dynamics so I'll right click on the cube and I'll come to simulation tags and I'll choose rigid body. If I hit play, you can see the cube is falling. So it means it's dynamic. Now we have to make the floor like floor rigid so that the cube will collide with the floor. So I'll right click on the uh, floor and I'll come to simulation tag and I'll choose collider body. Right. And now if I hit play, you can see the cube is not moving. It's trying to fall, but the cube is colliding. So the cube is static though, but it's dynamic. So you interact with dynamic objects because it's a collider body, right? So for the cube to 
animate or rotate, we need some sort of push or energy, something to push it. And we don't want to keyframe it. We could actually keyframe it for it to move, but we don't want to use that. So we'll come to the cube, the dynamics, the dynamic tag on the cube, and you come down to um, dynamics, the dynamic tab here. And you can see we have custom initial velocity. So we click on the custom, we check it, and you can see it gives us some um, information or some parameters down here. So you can see we have initial angular velocity. So that, those things, I mean, the initial uh, linear velocity, if I should actually give it like, let's say, 200 centimeters and hit play. Actually, let me go back and hit play. You can see it moves the cube um, on that um, axis, right? So you are going to use the initial angular velocity to rotate the cube, force it to rotate how, where we want it to go. So I'll increase, um, I think it's, let me, let's see, and increase the first one, right? Which I think will be rotating on the, on its Y axis. So it's not the first one, actually. So I think it's the last one. And aha, uh -huh, you can see it's trying to move, but it's not working. So let's increase it a bit to like, let's say 400 and hit play again. And you can see something is happening, it's trying to rotate, but because it's not heavy enough, it's not going, All right? So the first thing we will do is we will make, you know, we want friction to actually, so that it will actually stick to the floor and it will force it to rotate the other way around. So first of all, we come to the cube and actually we select the cube and the floor um, uh, tags. Then we come to collision. We will increase our friction to like, let's say 500 and take off our uh, bounce, right? So now it can't, it wouldn't bounce as much. So now let's hit play and can see now it doesn't jump up because there's no, no bounce in it, but still it still moves up a bit, right? Now for the cube, for us to force the cube to rotate in that angle, what you do is you select the cube and come the dynamic tag. We come to um, mass, right? And you can see down here we have rotational mass. So this actually, will force it to rotate, like give it a bit more rotation. So we'll increase it a bit more. Let's add one zero to it to make it thousand percent. And let's see what happens. You can see now it's rotating more, right? So we will actually increase it. In fact, let's make it to the full. I think the full is 10,000. So we will leave it at 10,000 and hit play. So now you rotate for a very long time very long time, but we don't like the way it's moving, bouncing up. So we have to force it to stick on the ground and to force it to stick on the ground, we will use gravity to force it, to push it down. So to change, we have to increase our gravity in the scene. So we hit control D and you come to dynamics. And now our, you see we have uh, the general tab, we have gravity and it's set to thousand percent. That's the gravity for the whole scene. So if I should increase it to like 10,000, now watch what happens. You can see straight away the cube begins to animate and it will go for as long as it wants. So basically, this is the technique behind this thing. And actually, let me increase my frames. So um, increase it. So it's forcing to rotate and it will go for a very long time, probably the whole frame will, and then you'll still try to move even though you slow down a bit but now it's still moving and it can go for a very long time so depending on how far you want it to go you actually might so for instance if i don't want it to move that fast i'll select the cube dynamic tag and i'll come to the dynamics and i'll reduce the initial set it to like let's say 200 now it wouldn't be as much so if i hit play you can see now it goes a bit slower so we can use that one to control the speed depending on how far you want it to go so basically that's the technique that works now the exciting thing about this thing is because it's dynamic let's see if i add in um let's see um this cylinder right i'll make it bigger and i'll actually change the axis i'll come to the orientation and make it minus z and 
maybe push it back. Oh, sorry, I'm moving the floor. I'll select the cylinder and push it back. I'll move it down a bit. So it's like an obstacle in our way. And I'll make it a collider body. So I'll right click and it's simulation tag. And I'll come to collider body. And I'll hit play. And let's see what happens. See, it passes through the cylinder because an obstacle. So it can actually pass through a lot of things. So if it doesn't matter how, how the floor is, it's a very, very interesting way of working. So let me actually, for now, delete the dynamics. I just wanted to show you that. And another interesting thing is cube might be easy to rotate. So for instance, this the technique works on a lot of things. So I'll actually come in here and I'll drop in like, let's say a cone. A cone is actually something different. The shape is different. So right, I'll make the cone come up 100 centimeters. So that will be on the floor, right? And I'll copy the tag from the cube, actually hold control and click and drag and you'll copy the tag from the cube to the um, uh, cone, but we will disable the cube or else it will interact with the uh, cone. So let's hit play and see what happens. And instantly the cube inherits the animation. So literally a lot of things. So let for the uh, cone, let's increase it a bit and hit play and you can see it's also following the animation. So it can work on almost everything. Like it doesn't matter the shape or whatever. So now this is basically the technique behind it, right? There are several interest other ways to do it. So this is how I basically did the, what I show you in the beginning of the scene. So what I did was I created another cube for the bricks, uh, for the brick wall, I created another cube. And actually, I think make this 120 and make it the height 60. And I'll make the X 30. Right? So this is my brick. <coughs> right? And I went ahead and I created a clone object. I made the brick a child um, of the uh, clone object. And I'll come into the mode i change it to uh, honey uh, honeycomb right i actually change i don't like where it looking so let's do it x yes so i change the orientation to x z uh, z y or the x uh, orientation then the count i think for now let's do the count so the size the width size of the honeycomb so now let's make it um let's actually see I think 60 will be fine. All right. Then this one will be actually let come to the display and change the shading to garage shading lines. Then I can see the lines. So now we will drag this down to get close. So 120 will also be fine. Then now we can actually increase it a little bit. I think it's too much. Maybe 30 will be fine. And now let's move it onto the floor. Like that. So I'll actually move it back a little bit. Right. And let's hit play. Goes through because it's not dynamic yet. So I'll right click to add any dynamics to any object in Smart 4D. Right click come to simulation and add a rigid body. So now it's a rigid body by hit play and let's see what happens. Now, so the dynamic, the rigid body sees the whole clone as one object, right? So you have to tell it's, it's individual object that's forming that. So I'll click on the dynamic tag on the clone object and I'll come to um, collision and the individual element, I'll say all, I'll change it from off to all. And now let's hit play. You can see now it's falling. Right? Now, the reason why I think it's falling is I think the gravity in the scene that I added was too much and it's affecting the whole scene. So, what I'll do is usually for, for that huge gravity for the scene, and I want it just for the cube. So, I'll come to Control D, which is the project settings. So, I come to actually go here, edit project settings, which is the same as the Control D I did, the dynamics, and you see general. Right, 
So we will bring back the dynamics to the default, which is thousand. And now we create our own di uh, gravity. We create our own gravity. We come to simulate particles and choose gravity. Now increase the gravity level to the 10,000 that we want. It will add it to the gravity we have in the scene already. But now we don't want this gravity to affect the clone, right? The bricks. So we will select um, this gravity and you come actually. Yeah, we will select um, the clone clone dynamic uh, tag and you come to forces and you see we have force mode and force list so we tell it to exclude this gravity so now we we'll drag and drop this gravity in the force like field of the cloner object and now let's hit play so now you can see it's standing for a bit and this one goes through like that and so basically that's how I actually did what I did in the scene right and because it's strong it will pass through like nothing has happened and it will move basically so this is how i did with a bit of manipulation so that i wouldn't it wouldn't fall so play around with dynamics and the size of the um the how do you call it the brick so that it doesn't can have a bit of grandin like let's see let's increase it to 40 and see hit play right and i can see it's standing a little bit more so basically that's how i did like the scene i show you in the first place but that's not all it's interesting we can still do more so for now let's disable this brick wall right i'll actually later open go into the scene and break down how i did the, the scene the, the one i showed in the beginning but now it's not all so now we have our cube the interesting thing is we can actually go ahead and put this cube in a cloner object so i'll create a clone make the cube with the dynamics a child of the clone uh, make it we change it to grid and reduce the count on the y so now let's increase the size and increase this one as well and now let's move it up another 100 centimeters like so that it will always be on the floor or else if you leave it in the middle it will bounce like it will explode so if you hit play you can see it's moving the cube all of them together that's very interesting and you can actually trigger it one by one so for instance i can actually use them um, let's say i don't want all them all of them to move at once so i can actually come select um the dynamic and I'll come here to the collision and I think I'll change it from I think it's the dynamic rather I'll change it from immediately to on collision right then I'll create let's see um this cube right I'll create this cube I mean I think it's fine then now I'll right click on the cube and add another dynamic object let's see right click simulation but this time I'll add a ghost body so a ghost body is like a dynamic object right but it doesn't how do i even put it it interacts with dynamic object but it can actually pass through it's like some force kind of so it interacts with dynamic object but you don't like it if it, it, it pushes it like kind of force it creates a force it's a dynamic force kind of so basically i have this cube right but i'll hide it because it's a ghost body then i'll hit play right because i said on collision now it will only happen on collision when the cube interacted it so i'll actually move the cube back in fact let me unhide it so i'll hit play right then now now click it you can see now it's now moving this right I can actually come in here so interactively now so the ghost body like sort of triggers it if i had used dynamic rigid, uh, rigid body or collider body it would have actually hit the cube and it will move but this one it triggers it is some kind of dynamic force so yeah you can actually use 
a different different form so i can actually use the um, all of and effectors to also control when it should move which one should move first and everything so basically this is several ways and for instance like another interesting if it's close together you can actually see how powerful this thing is it actually moves over each other so now the clue now actually close it a bit right and now i'll actually bring it back to immediately i'll leave it from condition immediately and let's hit play and see it's moving on top of another one too so it doesn't matter see the ones at the back are forcing to move and even with the directional change still moving so you can play around it with it a lot to create several other interesting things so this is how to do the technique i did so in order not to make the video very long i'll actually divide it into two parts so in the part two i'm also going to show you another technique how to actually combine animation and the dynamics together so this is very interesting but the downside is you don't have control over the pace and how you want the cube to move from time to time but with the other one you actually have control on the pace using your own keyframe animation but like you don't, wouldn't struggle with the pivot and everything dynamics will actually make it recognize where the pivot is and it will move like properly like a rolling cube but then it will follow your animation how you want it to rotate and it's very simple and easier than setting up a lot of pivots and all that also i'll actually break down the scene how i did my my the one i showed in the beginning and then actually the lighting and all those parts as well i also show how to do like a normal cube rolling like with some few steps like using the normal pivot creating different nulls and stuff so i'll end this one and i'll continue in part two so that like, it wouldn't be a long video thanks for watching and i'll see you in the part two